And in the first place, you have a test for the virus, which can tell you whether or not you are infected at the time. That works by detecting viral genetic material, and it, it can be taken from a swab, which is either your nose or the back of your throat. And there are a lot of such tests which are running at the moment. There are, we are actually not clear what the best tests are. We're gathering data on that all the time. But then there's also an antibody test. Now, the antibody test does not tell you, are you infected? It tells you that you have been infected by detecting the presence of antibodies against COVID or SARS-CoV-2 in your blood. Now, those are being developed. And it's quite, it's important when you make them that you can distinguish between immunity to SARS-CoV-2, the pandemic virus, and the other beta coronaviruses, which we encounter all the time. Um, because there are two other beta coronaviruses which cause just colds and which you've probably had. And as a result of that, if you cannot tell the difference between them, then you're going to be, uh, then you're going to start thinking that people are immune potentially when they're not. And those tests taken together are going to tell us a lot of really important stuff. Firstly, if you're testing people, you can identify them and isolate them and do all the good contact tracing, all that good basic epidemiology that you want to do to prevent further surges, further things that overwhelm healthcare. And we can, that's, that should be achievable. And the other thing will be that if we can find out that a substantial fraction of the public has been infected, had very mild symptoms, and now has evidence of immunity, then it's possible that those people might be better able to go out and you know, live their lives comparatively normally. I want to be very careful, though, to state that we do not yet know exactly how much immunity, how much antibody in the blood is necessary to reflect neutralizing immunity. 